Hello everybody, it's Mr. Gaff here. Today, we're going to be talking about the three states of matter. Solids, liquids, and gases. I'm going to try and limit it to about three fart jokes for this video, you know, because of, because of the gases. <laughs> that doesn't count as one. So in this video, we're going to do three things, alright? We're going to first look at some properties for each of these states of matter. Then we're going to look at a model to look at the particles inside the states of matter, how they're formed and how they move. And then, lastly, we are going to look at how these states of matter go from one form to the other. So first, let's talk about solids. First of all, solids have a fixed shape and a fixed volume. They are going to stay the same shape and take up the same amount of space. You think about solids as kind of stubborn. Uh, they are what they are. Don't touch me, I'm a solid. I'm not going, because I'm a solid and I don't have a fixed shape and volume. So if we were to look at the particles inside of a solid, they would look a little bit like this. Oh wow, look at that. Magic, yeah. The particles in a solid are packed closely together because solids tend to be denser than liquids and gases. The particles also tend to form a pattern. Now they're not moving all that much. There's some friction going on in between them, but they're not passing over each other and they're not floating all willy-nilly like some of the other states of matter. Now, as you probably realize, all solids aren't the same strength, right? We have some metals which are really hard to bend. We also have some solids like wax and gum, which are easily bended. Bended doesn't make sense there. Sorry. But keep in mind, you are applying a force or some energy to that solid to make that change. Otherwise, it would have a fixed shape and a fixed volume. So that's a solid. They're stubborn, all right? And their particles are packed closely together. Now let's talk about liquids. Like solids, liquids have a fixed volume. They don't change the amount of space that they take up. But unlike solids, liquids don't have a fixed shape. Liquids will take the shape of their container. You see this all the time when you take out something to drink, whether it be Coke, Mountain Dew, Surge, baby, yeah orange juice or anything, and you pour it into your container. Let's look at this example with water. As you can see, when the water is poured into the cup, it takes the shape of the cup. Whoa. This is because the particles in a liquid are more spread out than they are in a solid and look more like this. Particles pass between one another, but there's not enough energy so the particles are going all crazy, so they still have a fixed volume. So both solids and liquids have a fixed volume, but solids have a fixed shape, whereas liquids take the shape of their container. You could put me into a container and I wouldn't automatically suddenly go blah and fill the shape of the container. I am who I am because I'm a solid baby. Now solids can turn into liquids and liquids can turn into solids. There's some processes that you know. How does a solid turn into a liquid? Well, it melts. I'm melting. Yeah. How does a liquid turn into a solid? Well, it freezes. It's freezing in here, man. In both those instances, melting and freezing, there is a different amount of energy applied, heat energy or thermal energy. For a solid to melt into a liquid, it has to get hotter, which gives the particles more energy. So they move around. They'll freak out like, yeah, hey, let's go. Let's go to the party, son. We're going to be liquid soon. Yeah, baby. Or when something is frozen from a liquid to a solid, the particles have less energy. Energy is taken away. So they were like, yeah, I'm good, I'm good, here comes the cold. I'm good, I'm good. This is not as cute as before, because I'm a solid now. Technically, it actually is cooler. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that one, but it had to be done. Okay, so let's move on to our last phase of matter, or gases. I'm kidding. This is a family program. So gases don't have a fixed shape or a fixed volume. They're like, I don't need any of that stuff. You have it, liquids and solids. I don't want it, dude. I'm free. Free as a bird. So gases do not have a fixed shape or a fixed volume. Because of that, gases are easily compressed, which means they can be forced into tight spaces. They also expand to fit the container that they're in. So while a liquid will take the shape of its container, a gas will go inside of a container and spread out to fill that container. Particles in a gas, if you were to put it in a container, would look something like this. Particles move extremely freely and they move very fast. They can also be really spread out. A liquid turns into a gas through a process called evaporation. We heat the liquid till it gets so much energy that it escapes into the air. Wait, wait, what happened? Where am I? Oh man, must have been that evil wizard. Turn me into a gas again. And since most gases are invisible, you guys can't see me. But don't worry, gases can turn back into liquids through a process called condensation. Let's go get my groove back. 
Messing up my groove. Now there's actually a fourth state of matter called plasma. But the thing about plasma is it doesn't occur naturally on Earth. It's in stars and space and stuff like that. So while it's really, really cool, plasma, woohoo. I'm not gonna talk about it here, but if you're interested in it, go ahead and Google it. So those are the three states of matter. I actually didn't make a single fart joke. I'm incredibly proud of myself. This is all because I have a great attitude. <laughs> Snuck one in at the end. So that's it everybody, that's all I have for today. I will catch you guys next time.